Hey, hey guys. Oh, I meant to review this uh, yesterday, but I ended up getting sidetracked and busy, so I just decided to wait until today. So the original plan was that uh, I was gonna do the Death Note review and then uh, do the uh, the uh, Dragon Ball Evolution Funny Bad review to kind of tie into it, but now they're both going up on the same day. <laughs> But, yeah, I, this is a movie I really wanted to talk about, and I was actually considering not reviewing it. I was considering just, you know, watching it and not reviewing it, like I don't always do with a lot of movies, but I I gotta talk about it, because it seems to be a pretty divisive uh, film uh, so far among audiences and critics, so I wanted to talk about it and give my, give my two cents on it. Um, so let's talk about Death Note. Death Note tells the story of this kid named White. He is, um, he's just this high schooler. He finds this book called a Death Note where you write someone's name in it and then you picture their face and they die. Exactly how you want them to. So he uses it to try and, uh, rid the world of evil and criminals, and yeah, we have a movie. So I'll start out by saying, uh, with the cast, I thought Nat Wolf as Light was pretty good. I didn't think it was great. I didn't think he did an amazing job with the character. I didn't think the performance was amazing. I just thought the character and the performance were pretty good. I'm not really all that familiar with the anime version of the character, so just just basing my opinion off of the version in the movie, I thought he was a pretty good character. I thought Willem Dafoe as Ryuk, the uh, Shinigami, uh, was amazing. Just amazing. Probably the best character in the movie. Uh, best performance by far. And I thought he was just delightfully creepy, and it really seemed like he was having a ton of fun with the part. And I think a lot of people are going to come away from this movie saying that he is the best character in the movie. And then you have uh, Lakeith Stanfield as L, who is this detective who is investigating uh, the case of Kira, which is the vigilante name that Light and uh, Maya take on. I was not expecting to really care about L at all, or even really like him. I thought he was just going to be kind of a character that pops in, does this thing, and doesn't really make an impact on the story. And I ended up being pleasantly surprised by his character. I was very entertained by his character and performance. Throughout the movie, he's playing these, like, mind games with, um... Uh, Light or Kira, and he doesn't know at first who Kira is, but so you have Light who sees that L is after Kira, and so they are kind of playing this little back and forth until uh, he does eventually figure it out, and I just thought that whole character dynamic was amazing. Uh, again, this movie is pretty divisive. There's not a lot of... There's there's a lot of good things in this movie. There are a lot of bad things in this movie. I'm going to talk about the positives first. I really like the atmosphere and tone that was set up in this movie. I thought that it had a very distinctive style. And a lot of that was brought through with the pretty great direction by Adam Wingard. I honestly thought he did a great job with this movie. Directing-wise and... I'm excited to see Godzilla vs. Kong because of it, which I believe he is attached as director to, so, yeah. Um, there's a really clever moment in the movie involving uh, pronunciation of uh, words that... It seems like it is a bit of a jab at how Americans sometimes can mispronounce Japanese words and names. Um... So I just, I thought that was pretty funny that that moment was just something that just particularly stuck out to me as something I really enjoyed and found funny. 
Um, I thought White's dive into becoming Kira was very well done. You know, he, um, he meets Maya, he shows her the Death Note, and they kind of start doing it together, and they basically together become Kira, whereas in the anime, I believe it was just Light. So, I thought that was an interesting way to put it, and it definitely, from what I've... From what I do know about Light's character in the anime, it seems kind of like they almost kind of split his character uh, into two halves and made one part of his character as Light and the other part as Maya. And then when they came together as Kira, it created the character from the anime. So I thought that was interesting. Uh, he doesn't really... Get, get into it right away. At first, you know, he he just uses the Death Note to get revenge, and then he does eventually start trying to use it to make the world a better place in the wrong way. And there's a great speech that his dad gives him about, like, picking the lesser of two evils that gets called back to near the end, and I thought that was also a really cool thing in the movie. Again, the cat and mouse game between L and Light was very entertaining to watch. Uh, I thought the evolution of the relationship between Light and Ryuk was one of the best parts of the movie. Um, you have... When they first meet, obviously Light's pretty freaked out, but Ryuk is very nice towards him and friendly, and he's trying to gain his trust, and then as they slowly... As their relationship slowly develops, it turns into more of a um, antagonizing relationship rather than a friendly one. And I thought that was an interesting thing. Again, not familiar with the anime, so this is all just stuff I'm experiencing from the movie. If it's different than the anime, then... Oh well. <laughs> um, I'm not here to compare this to the anime. I'm here to judge it as a movie. So, um, yeah. Uh, there's a twist near the end that I actually wasn't expecting. It's pretty well set up over the course of the movie, but it, so it's not, like, completely out of left field, but it still kind of caught me off guard, and I actually really liked it, and it, it made me like a couple of main characters in the movie a lot more than I did throughout the rest of it. So, yeah. Now the negatives. <laughs> okay, so I gotta scroll down real quick. Um, the negatives here. The introduction of the Death Note itself was very fast. We have the uh, opening credits and the opening... We get the opening credits montage and scene, and then the very next scene, after like after the credits are done rolling, just the very first scene of the movie is when they introduce it. And it's like, we don't even really get to know who the characters are, anything about them, what their motivations are, what is going on in their lives. And we just automatically are immediately introduced to the Death Note. And then a few scenes later, we're introduced to Ryuk. I would have probably, if I was making this movie, I would have waited until the beginning of Act 2 or the end of Act 1 to introduce the Death Note and use Act 1 to make you care about the characters and really get on board with the characters so that when... so you already care about these characters, then the Death Note is actually introduced and everything that you thought you knew about the characters that you cared about is kind of flipped on its head. I would... I think that would have been a much better way to do it and it would have made you care more about everything, basically. Uh, I thought the actors all did a great, or a good enough job, just not good enough to, for me to really care about what happens to them. Again, the only ones who really kind of stood out to me were Willem Dafoe and Lakeith Stanfield. 
those were the only two characters, uh, Ryuk and L, that I thought were actually good or great in the movie. <laughs> um, the pacing of the movie is pretty off. Some things and characters are introduced and dropped pretty fast. Certain things are just kind of glossed over as if they didn't even happen. Um, after he decides to become Kira, there's like a whole just montage that skips over something that I... A part of Light's life that I would have liked to have seen. Um, and this movie... It's not like it has to be short. It's a Netflix movie. They can make it pretty long if they want to. Or heck, make it a series. I would have liked to have seen a series, but... I mean, we got a movie, and it's not a long movie. It's not really a short movie either. It's just... It's a movie. <laughs> but yeah, the pacing is pretty off. Certain character arcs aren't very well fleshed out. Again, I would have liked to have seen maybe an extra half hour to even an hour added on to this movie. I think it would have helped uh, the movie. I think it would have helped the movie flow a lot better. And the biggest problem I had is that I never really felt myself caring about any of the characters other than Ryuk. And that's only because he's the coolest and most interesting character in the movie played by the best actor in the movie, with the best performance in the movie. So, and I've seen the movie once. I watched a lot of uh, clips that have been uploaded over to YouTube multiple times. And yeah, I just, I still just don't care about anyone. And I think one, like, probably one of the biggest problems with the movie is, um... A lot of the music just felt very misplaced in this movie. Like, there's a lot of 80s style love songs in the movie that I just didn't think fit that well. Um, I thought the tone of the movie was pretty good, but, um, like, because tonally it's very dark and horror-esque, but it also has some kind of horror comedy elements to it, like some dark comedy type stuff. And I like that, it's just that the, the music was a little too much. Because obviously the music, as, as it being like 80s pop rock type music, it's it, it makes the movie a little more light toned, no pun intended, but it just felt very misplaced in the movie. Um, this isn't a negative, but I just thought, um, I just wanted to point this out. There's a very funny moment in the opening credits, right when you turn the movie on, the opening credits, it says, Netflix presents a Netflix original film. And out loud, I just went, well, no, duh. Like, I didn't even, like, have enough time to subconsciously process it. I was just like, no. Really? Netflix presents a Netflix original movie? <laughs> I never would have guessed. And I will say, I the ending is what is kind of dividing a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people, i watched the clip of the ending over and over again, like 15 times. A lot of people love it, a lot of people hate it. I was just confused by it. I don't know quite what I think about it yet. I will do a probably, I'll probably do a theory on it soon. Um, but the movie just kind of ends abruptly. It just, I mean, I would call it a cliffhanger, but it's really not a cliffhanger. It just ends. And that is probably the biggest Again, a big part of the pacing problem with the movie is that it just ends. Like... I, I mean, I want to describe it, but I really can't without going into spoilers, so I just kind of have to leave it at that. Um, but, so, final thoughts. I think the characters and story could have probably been done better. I like the concept behind it. I thought the execution was actually pretty well done. I think out of the very 
few American translations or adaptations of uh, live act or out of a few live action American anime movies I've seen, I'd say this is probably one of the better ones. Overall, I really liked the movie, and I would recommend it to any fans of dark fantasy movies. And I really hope we get a sequel, because again, it does kinda end on a cliffhanger. And so I would like to see how the story ends up. Ends up. But I'm gonna give Death Note a B-. minus. If you have seen it, let me know in the comments what you think about it. If you're a fan of the anime, uh, let me know how it compared. Uh, for you, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you in the next video.